Hello, kids and grown-ups. My name is Kuya Gino, and I'm glad to see you again here for another episode of Next Gen Life. We've been. What's that? There's something. Oh, Curious Box, you're here. Okay, I'm sensing an angry vibe from you. I'm so sorry, Curious Box. I didn't mean to leave you out. I really didn't know you'd be joining me today. Will you please forgive me? Thank you. You know, I'm really glad that you're here with me today. Because today, we are going on, on an adventure! Right here! <laughs> We're not going anywhere, Curious Box. We're gonna have our very own camping adventure right here. No pandemic or quarantine can stop us. Because we still have our imagination. So kids, can we go now? Well, before we go to any kind of adventure, we must pray first. Let's bow down our heads, put our hands together, close our eyes, and talk to God from our hearts. Dear God, thank you for our gathering today and for our camping adventure. Help us, Lord, to learn and have fun while discussing your word. Holy Spirit, please guide us in our adventure so we can all be safe and we can all worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So who's ready for a camping adventure? I know I am. But first, we're gonna make sure that we are properly dressed as we go up the mountain. And what's great about our imagination is that we can do everything in a snap. That's more like it. You're right, Curious Box. We need to bring our Bibles with us wherever we go. Okay, everybody, let's stand up and follow me and Curious Box. Let's hike up to the mountain on the way to our campsite. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? Here we go. Hut, two, three, four. 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 No, we're not there yet. Look, there's a bridge that we need to cross. Be careful. Hut. Two, three, four, four, hut, two, three, four, hut, two, three, four, and stop. <sighs> Whew. Well, this looks like a good place to stop. Let's build our campsite here. Whoa, oh, it's cold up here in the mountain. Hey, do you know what's my favorite part in camping is? Yes, it's toasting marshmallows over a campfire, like this. Ah, that's more like it. Now we can sit down and keep warm. Oh, be careful, Curious Box. Don't get close to the fire. You might get burned. Oh yes, Curious Box. Sitting by the campfire is the best time for storytelling. In fact, I have a story about two brothers that I've been meaning to share with you today. Let's get our Bibles out. Are you kids ready to hear our story today? Remember, stay seated on your warm and cozy spot. Obey, watch, and listen. Today is the third lesson of our series called Vibe Check. And we've been talking all about what we can do with our unpleasant feelings or emotions that don't feel nice. In this series, we're learning to stop running away 
from our unpleasant vibes, but instead, we run to God with whatever vibe we have. Last week, we learned to run to God with our anxiety. Today, we will learn how to run to God with our anger. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. Our story today is about two brothers named Cain and Abel. They are the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain was a farmer who grew vegetables, while Abel was a shepherd who took care of sheep. Bah! Um, I don't think Baba was alive back then. This was a long time ago. <laughs> One day, Cain brought to God some of the vegetables that he grew as his offering. Abel made an offering too. He chose to offer to God the best parts of his firstborn sheep. The Lord was pleased with Abel's offering, but he did not accept Cain's offering. Maybe because God could see inside the hearts of Cain and Abel, and he saw that it was only Abel who truly honored him from the heart. When Cain saw that his offering wasn't accepted, he became very angry. His face turned gloomy. What happens when you feel angry? Do your eyebrows start to meet into a frown? Do you feel your heart pounding really hard and you're breathing faster and harder? Do you feel like a storm is brewing in your head and your face is turning hot? Do you find yourself clenching your fists and wanting to keep walking around and even uh, stomping your feet? Well, God saw how Cain was feeling and he said to him, Why are you angry? And why is your face gloomy? Yes, curious box? Oh, God definitely knows everything. God asked Cain these questions to help him do a number one. Vibe check to be aware that he's starting to have an unpleasant emotion. And number two, identify his feeling of anger. He was also giving Cain the chance to number three, bring his anger to God by talking to him about what he was feeling and to help Cain think carefully about what he was going to do with his anger. God warned him, if you do good, I will accept you. But if you do not do good, sin is ready to attack you. Sin wants you, but you must rule over it. It's like God giving Cain a chance to choose what to do with his anger. That's a really good question. We usually think that anger is bad, but remember, that even God, who is perfectly good, gets angry. So sometimes it can be good too. There are two kinds of anger, righteous anger and sinful anger. Anger is like this fire that we have here. Fire can be useful or helpful when it helps us keep warm, helps us cook our favorite food or roast yummy marshmallows, right? Fire also brings light. It helps us see in the dark. But fire can also be harmful and hurtful. It can spread and burn houses, kill our trees, and hurt people. In summary, righteous anger is helpful and useful. It's coming from a place of love and care like when God gets angry of our sins. Or when someone hurts our mom, our dad, we get angry. Sinful anger is hurtful and harmful. It's coming from a place of pride and selfishness. Like when someone does not admit his wrong. Or when someone gets suddenly angry if his time is not being followed. We need to be very careful not to let sinful anger take over our hearts. Just like what God said to Cain, 
sin wants us, and we must try to take control of it. So what did Cain do with his anger after God talked to him? Well, sadly, Cain let his sinful anger take control of him. He invited Abel to go into the field with him. And when they got there, Cain killed his very own brother. What did God do? Well, God gave Cain a chance to admit of what he did to his brother. God asked, Where is your brother Abel? And instead of Cain admitting of his faults, he said, I don't know. Am I supposed to care for my brother? Yes, Curious Box, Cain did not admit to God the truth. And because God loves Cain, he had to give him a punishment to teach him what is right and good. God told him that from then on, even if Cain tried hard to farm the land, it will not produce harvest. From then on as well, Cain would be a restless person who wanders around the earth. But God promised that he will be protected from his enemies, that he will be alive. Wow. Yes, Curious Box? Ah, a very important question to ask. What can we do when we start feeling angry? Like a volcano, we start to feel the lava inside us boiling. Before we explode, freeze! Take some deep breaths. Count to ten. And then remember, What's the first thing we do again when we have unpleasant vibes? Yes, we run to God with our vibe or V-I-B-E. Letter V, vibe check. Ask God to help you check your heart. What is this feeling? Where is this feeling coming from? Is it righteous anger or sinful anger? Letter I, identify the feeling. Admit what you are feeling by naming it. Don't be afraid to say, I got angry because I didn't get what I wanted. And letter B, bring your anger to God. Surrender and give your anger, your feelings to the Lord and find out what He is teaching you. Our memory verse today teaches us what to do with our anger. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. To help us remember the verse, let's do it with actions now. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. In your anger, do not sin. And do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. How do we stop the sun from going down while we're angry? Oh, the Bible isn't telling us to stop the sun from setting when we're angry. God is actually teaching us in our memory verse not to keep our anger, not to let anger linger in our hearts. So we need to take control over it. <laughs> How can we express or tell others about our angry feelings? Well, Curious Box, I'm so glad that you asked that. Here in Vibe Check series, we said it's important to talk about the unpleasant feelings that we have. It's the same with our anger, but we want to talk about our anger in the right way so that we do not sin. We don't want to explode like a volcano and spread wildfire around us and burn the people, right? 
The Bible also teaches us to speak truth in love. Here's a quick tip on how to do that. Instead of telling others their faults, talk about your feelings about their actions. For example, do not say, hmm, you're so unfair. Instead of saying that, you can say something like this. I feel angry when you don't give me my turn. Or instead of saying, you're so selfish, you can say something like this. I feel upset because you don't listen to me. Now let's try that. Think of something that made you mad lately. Now let's practice saying how you feel and the action that made you angry. I feel when great. Do you feel angry when I don't pay attention to you? Thank you, Curious Box, for telling me how you feel. How about you kids? Did you try it? Keep practicing, okay? So let's see. We've reviewed V, I, and B. Do you remember what the last letter is? What is it, Curious Box? Good job, Gears Box. Letter E, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome, to be victorious of our sins. God sends His Holy Spirit to all those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Have you been keeping sinful anger in your heart lately? Would you like to surrender your anger to Jesus and let Him be your Lord and Savior? If so, you can pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry if I get angry all the time. I'm sorry if I let my emotions take control. But Lord, thank you for explaining to us all that you can help us be victorious with our emotions and with our feelings. Forgive us, Lord, for making our emotions first than you. Right now, we open our hearts and our minds. We accept you as our Lord and our Savior. And from now on, we will let the Holy Spirit take control of our lives and not our emotions anymore. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, welcome to God's family. Hey, Curious Box, what do you think is our big idea today? That's right. Surrender your anger to God. Say the big idea again with me, kids. Surrender your anger to God. Oh, that means it's the end of our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot of things in our adventure. See you again next week for another episode of Vibe Check. Only here at Next Gen Live. Goodbye! Discuss the questions that will be flashed on your screen and share what you have learned today. If you want to know more about how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus, you may ask your squad leader and your parents about it. of a next-gen small group by Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there!